Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. So I've really skipped out covering a lot of the MCU Disney Plus shows on this channel. I talked about WandaVision and Loki a bit, but for the most part I've steered clear. There's a few reasons. One is pretty simple. Many of these shows I really didn't want to watch the full run of. They just failed to hold my attention. I also just felt like no one was really asking me to, which used to be kind of unusual for MCU projects. But now it's like... I don't think I've seen a single person get upset in the comments that I didn't cover Secret Invasion. The Disney Plus shows, which kicked off with a ton of buzz back in early 2021, so often feel like a disappointing afterthought now. To the point where, apparently even Disney CEO Bob Iger is fine using them as a scapegoat, saying they, Marvel, had not been in the TV business at any significant level. Not only did they increase their movie output, but they ended up making a number of television series, and frankly, it diluted focus and attention. That is, I think, more of the cause than anything. So I think it's worth discussing how they got here, and how they managed to make the Netflix and ABC era of Marvel TV, which had plenty of flaws on their own, looks so much better in comparison. I'm gonna try to stay away from any major spoilers and instead focus on the big picture, though I will say there will probably be some minor ones for Secret Invasion. Mostly, I'm talking about where Marvel TV went wrong and how it can improve once TV production resumes. Superhero, ah, I'm real, swinging, shield, clinging, superhero. So let's talk about Secret Invasion. One weird thing about me is that as much as I love comics, I've spent most of my life as a reader of them avoiding big event comics. You know, where Marvel or DC rolls out a big event series that's supposed to change everything, and often derails a bunch of enjoyable solo titles in the process, and often you're expected to read a whole bunch of one-shot tie-ins to even have the full context of what's going on. It's just not a mode of modern comics that I really enjoy, especially as someone who grew up devouring runs of older comics at the local library. Basically, give me a writer and artist putting in a long, sustained run on a title over a sprawling event any day of the week. But I've always had a soft spot for Secret Invasion. It's been a while since I've read it, and that was back when I was a diehard Brian Michael Bendis fan thanks to his Ultimate Spider-Man run, which for the record I still do really love. And I'd probably enjoy its ultra quippy dialogue a bit less now, but at the end of the day I think it's just a killer, killer premise. Any one of your favorite superheroes could be an alien imposter. So the simple premise of John Carpenter's The Thing played out on a grand scale across the Marvel Universe. If you're going to do an event series, at least have a premise that exciting. Now, with the TV version, basically all of that is out the window. Unless you were going to hand out some of the most lucrative contracts in the history of television, there was no way they were going to assemble the cast of characters required by the comic. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson agreeing to star in a TV show by itself was already a pretty big get. So by its very nature, it was never going to hit those same exciting notes that were open to the comic series. But that doesn't mean it had to be bad, and it isn't really an excuse for what we ended up with. And here's where we get to the structure of these Marvel TV shows. I've made videos about my problems with how most streaming dramas are structured before, the short seasons that feel like bloated movie scripts, and for most MCU shows that definitely applies. Secret Invasion is meandering, it's dull, it positions itself as an exploration of Nick Fury when it has very, very little of interest to say about him. I think it would be far more enjoyable if it were structured like a season of an old FX show, say Justified or The Shield, where each episode has distinct episodic stories and plot elements that help them feel unique, while also adding to a building, season-long narrative instead of just counting on a season-long narrative to carry the entire thing. I mean, of course I do. If you've seen enough of my videos, you probably knew that. But I also understand that this isn't trying to be an ongoing series. It, like most MCU shows, doesn't want to be just lowly TV. No, no, no. It's something much classier. A prestige miniseries. This is where I would play the psycho music sting if I wasn't afraid of the copyright bot and that wasn't super overused. I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to TV in 2023, nothing fills me with dread like the word miniseries. 
but I should clarify that. I think there have been fantastic TV miniseries from HBO's Band of Brothers to the incredibly underrated Show Me a Hero to even older ones like Roots and Lonesome Dove. And of course, that's not even mentioning non-American television. The history of TV couldn't be told without the miniseries. But in the last decade, the difference between miniseries and ongoing TV dramas has kind of blurred. A Netflix show that not enough people watched? Yeah, they'll often just call that a miniseries, even if it definitely would have gotten a season 2 with a little more success. That kind of annoys me, but the bigger issue here is that TV miniseries are actually incredibly hard to pull off, and Marvel, like many others, seems to view them as nothing more than movies with a lot more padding. Six episodes is nothing to an older episodic show. Like six episodes into Star Trek The Next Generation, or to pick a fellow spy show for Secret Invasion alias, though there are overarching elements, the first five episodes after the pilot of a show were generally used to acclimate the audience to the characters, the world they're in, and the pacing and structure they can expect from an average episode. In a miniseries trying to tell one long story though, it's often more like just very doughy, elongated, three-act screenplay structure that, to be honest, would often better be served by cutting a lot of useless subplots that don't end up adding much to the overall narrative. That's not to say that these extra-long screenplays can't be done well, but they better have a hell of a lot more on their mind than your average Marvel movie especially when they're positioning themselves as complex, adult paranoid thrillers like Secret Invasion did, but which features almost no suspense, no sense of paranoia, and definitely nothing overly complex. Unnecessarily convoluted maybe, but that's not the same thing. The simple pleasures of old-fashioned TV structures aren't there, you're not going to get a satisfying payoff every episode. Hell, a lot of the time, you're not going to get much happening at all in an episode beyond a lot of dour conversations filled with exposition. It comes in a far more prestigious package than like a old-fashioned cable action drama from the USA Network. It has a better overall cast, a far bigger budget, and a shorter episode order to fill. Yet, it almost never manages to be more entertaining than them because those shows were never pretending to be something they weren't. Like, there's a version of a Sam Jackson-led, expensive Nick Fury spy show, even with this exact same cast, telling weekly adventure stories that build to a big finale, that I think people would have really liked. But because it married itself to this prestige miniseries format, what we got instead was this downbeat slog. One that, let's be honest, at the end of the day, wasn't actually smarter or more politically thoughtful than your average episode of Burn Notice, but certainly a lot more boring. I never fully loved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but after Secret Invasion, I've also never appreciated its usually fun and straightforward storytelling more. This isn't me saying that TV shouldn't be dark, thoughtful, brooding, or complex. But you actually have to be those things and, you know, execute them well. Why does a show that features Amelia Clark with a Drax arm take itself more seriously than a David Simon show half the time? It feels designed to be unsatisfying to both people who are tuning in for a tense spy drama and those who just want some superhero fun. So, okay, that's a lot of negativity, but how can Marvel shows get better? First, disconnect from the MCU. I know this would upset a lot of people, but it will help the MCU movies feel less cluttered and convoluted, and lets the TV shows escape the shadow of their much higher budget film counterparts. Second, embrace that you're making television. We don't need more of these bloated six hour movies in the world. And third, and this may be the most important of all, I think maybe just go all in on animation. This is part of the reason I'm really hoping X-Men 97 is great, because I'd love to see more animation from Marvel that isn't just strictly aimed at kids. Imagine if the budget of Falcon and the Winter Soldier or Moon Knight was given to the team behind some of those great Star Wars Visions animated shorts, and they made a hyper-stylized take on some Marvel characters instead. Amazon's Invincible is showing that there's an audience beyond kids for superhero animation, and it comes with the added benefit of being able to recast some of the MCU's heavy hitters like Cap and Iron Man without it feeling weird or out of place. A common complaint about MCU movies is that a lot of them lack a real sense of style, so why not offer fans who miss that from the comics animated shows that are drenched in style? 
Give someone like the creator of Samurai Jack and Primal a Wolverine show and let them run wild with it. Because one thing has become clear, what they're doing now isn't working. Animation and an embrace of the medium they're working in might just be the change that they desperately need. It's probably time for Marvel to try something completely new, and it might not be a bad idea for you to do the same. Something that really helps make that possible is Skillshare, your go-to platform for learning just about anything. Whether you've always wanted to master the art of watercolor painting, kickstart your creative writing journey, or maybe even delve into the UI UX design world, Skillshare has you covered. We all know how tough it can be to stay on track, and that's why Mike Vardy's class is so helpful, giving you the tools to form habits that can help you for a lifetime. Everyone has a different goal in mind when they join Skillshare, and none of them are too small. That's why Skillshare is giving my viewers an entire month to explore thousands of classes, free. So go to the link in the description or pinned comment below, and the first thousand people to use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.